So, you've got an awesome new song, and now you need a cool video to go with it on YouTube. Well, in this video, I show you how to make a simple but really awesome looking visualizer to go with your music when you post it on YouTube. This video is brought to you by Amazing Music Tracks. Licensed hundreds of royalty-free tracks for your videos, films, and more, including the music in this video. Check the description for a link and a 10% off discount. All right, so you can see here is our finished product, just to show that. Um, but let's go ahead and start from scratch. Let's start with a new composition. Now this composition, I'm actually gonna make this 1440p, which is 2K, so halfway between 1080p and 4K for those of you who don't know. And we are gonna make this uh, 60 frames per second. And then our duration, um, you'll wanna know how long your song is and set the duration based on that, obviously. All right, so go ahead and hit OK. Now the first thing we're gonna do is bring in our background. Now the background you're obviously gonna to wanna to select based on the theme of your song, I guess. In this case, the song is Lonesome Moonlight Waltz. So we got a nice kind of country background with a nice big moon in there. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna size this. There we go, and then we're gonna reposition it just so the moon is over to the side. That way we're not covering up the moon with our text once we get that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our effects and we're going to throw on a couple things. Now the first thing is Film Convert. Um, now Film Convert, you could use anything here. Um, I'm going to turn off the grain and then I'm going to switch to one of my black and white stocks. Let's go with that one. Um, I wanted kind of a black and white background again to go with the, kind of that classic country theme because this is uh, a bluegrass instrumental that we're doing this on. But again, whatever your song is, whatever genre, whatever it's about, um, pick a background based on that. Make it uh, make it something fun or interesting. If it's a hip hop song, you know, you might make it bright and colorful and vibrant. Um, if it's rap, I don't know, you might have it kind of grungy or something. But whatever you do, um, choose something that's thematic. And the next thing we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna throw on, actually, one thing I am going to do very quickly is throw on a levels, and we're just gonna tweak our black point and our gray point. Uh, that's just to kind of adjust the color um, as part of the color process. That's not too important. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we are going to throw on a blur. Now you can use pretty much any blur you want. Gaussian blur is generally a poorer choice, um, but in this case I actually am going to use it. Um, not the legacy one though. Um, the problem with Gaussian blur is that it doesn't handle the edges very well. However, in this case, because uh, of the way we're doing this, the edges don't matter as much. It's going to be cropped in a little bit, so that's not too much of an issue. So we're going to just choose an amount of blurriness. Uh, we want it just blurry enough that it's kind of it's kind of obvious that it's blurry, but you can still kind of see it. So maybe about 25. And that's just to create some separation to help the text stand out once we get the text on there. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go in and create our new composition. Now this one, uh, we're gonna have it 1080p. Now you could do this at 4K. If you're gonna do this at 4K, I would do the original composition at uh, like 5k, so slightly over, and then you, it'll make sense why in a second. And then with the 60 frames per second, you don't have to do 60 frames per second. Um, I prefer it because I really like the motion graphics. Um, motion graphics just look really smooth and crisp um, at 60 FPS. So 30 FPS, you could do that if you wanted, but in my opinion, um, for stuff like this, 60 FPS makes sense because, I mean, it's just, you know, whatever you're clicking on you it's really easy to make that choice um, it, it does take you know longer to render and all that but realistically um, 60 fps really is a big benefit for this kind of stuff in my opinion so anyway we're going to drag in our composition and we're going to scale it to a little bit bigger so let's say like 85 so it's still kind of sticking out the edge 
Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to throw on our text. So in this case, the song is Lonesome Moonlight Waltz. I don't think I got that capital. Oh, that is, all right. And so again, um, this will be kind of a stylistic choice, whatever font you use. I used Alpha Slab 1, as you can see, which is a, kind of a Western style font almost, which is why I chose it. And then we're just going to completely center that. Um, so it's got kind of a Western vibe to it. Uh, again, for hip hop, you might want a, a rap or pop or anything like that. You might want a cleaner font um, or something more acoustic. You know, again, it's thematic. You want to choose a font and a text style that matches uh, your your music. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in uh, Red Giant Universe plugin Long Shadow. And this is another stylistic thing. I'm gonna make that black. And we're going to shorten our shadow to make it just a little bit of shadow. Again, kind of that Western style. That's something you see a lot in Westerns. Um, and it also helps the text stand out a little bit. So um, this is, a, again, a Red Giant Universe plugin. Long Shadow does exactly what it sounds like, makes a long shadow on uh, different video elements. And it's particularly good for text. All right, so now we get to the actual fun part. How do we make the actual visualization? Because so far, this is just text in an image, right? Anybody can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Layer. We're going to make a new solid. Now, color doesn't matter. But we're going to throw that on. Um, obviously, this is ugly. Uh, we don't want this. So what we're going to do now is bring in our audio waveform plugin. Now, by default, this is pink, but I'm going to change this to be white. Now, we have quite a few options, um, and I'll get rid of these so you can kind of see. Now, we do need to bring in our music, so um, as you'll see here, I've got two different versions of the song. I've got the original, which is this, Lonesome Moonlight Waltz Wave, and then Wave Source. Now, the Wave Source, what I did, for those of you who are musically inclined, is I really, really upped the loudness. The reason is because when the Frequency um, Spectrum plugin is analyzing the audio, uh, it really helps to have as much loudness as possible because it really helps the visualizer um, really get a uh, strong shape of the waveform. So uh, sometimes uh, default properly mastered music isn't quite loud enough, doesn't have quite the loudness to really get a good looking waveform. So I've got two versions, the one you'll actually hear and then the wave source, which is uh, really ups the loudness. So I'll drop that on. Now, as you can see right now, our composition is way too long for this song, but that's something we can fix. Um, but now if we go into our controls for this, you can set your audio layer now as the wave source. And so you can see we now have our audio waveform. Now we have a few different choices um, in terms of what, how we want it to look. Um, we can choose how what stereo channels we want to take it from. We can also choose whether we want it to be digital, we want it to be dots, we want it to be lines. So we've got some options there, and we actually have two audio plugins. We also have the audio waveform, and I prefer this one, or excuse me, we have our audio spectrum as well. And I like this one because it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So again, we'll choose our music layer. Um, so we also have our digital, our analog, our dots. Um, I'm gonna go with the digital in this case, but we can also choose which side we want it to be on. Um, so in this case, we're going to choose side B for what we're doing. That way, our waveform is only on one side. Again, we're going to change this to white. And then we're also going to up the thickness of our bands a little bit. Let's go with 12. And then we're going to lower the softness, which is just changing how soft the edges are. Now, uh, so far, so good, right? Uh, but now we're going to throw on our polar coordinates, and that is what is going to make this circular. So we've got our um, rectangular to polar, and now we're going to up the interpolation to 100%, and now we have a circle. But as you can see, the circle isn't quite complete. So what we can do is go into our audio spectrum, and we can set our start point and our end point 
to make a full circle. Now in this case, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna make a half circle. And you can see we have way too many bands here as they're getting kind of lost. So I'm going to half our number of bands down to 32. And then I'm going to throw on a mirror. The reason I'm doing this is so that our waveform is symmetrical. So we can tweak this so that we have our symmetrical uh, image and then we're going to go into transform and just uh, turn that 90 degrees so that the top is at the top um, and you don't have to do that last mirror effect that's just again so that both sides are symmetrical to each other um, you could just do the polar coordinates to make it circular so anyway let's bring in our other layers and you can see uh, we <laughs> have a small problem but that's really easy to fix we can just scale up our image like 140 and that way it wraps around the text and uh, we can then go into a line and just make sure that we are perfectly aligned which we are so there we have it um, now one other thing I do like to do on things like this is just because we do have uh, you can see we have our our music waveform and all that it's looking nice and pretty um, but it's still, you know, we could make it a little more dynamic. So what I like to do is go in to our background composition, which you can see is right here, and add a add an expression. And this is why we wanted our background a little bit bigger than our composition. And we're going to throw in a wiggle. 0.25 is our speed. 15 is how much we're going to have it wiggle. And this actually just makes the background just slowly move. Now, again, this isn't something you necessarily have to do. Uh, but I'll disable these so you can just see the background. But you can just see it's just slowly moving, really subtle. I can speed it up there and you can see it a little bit better. But that just adds a little bit more dynamics and just, you know, uh, adds some interest. So again, uh, just a recap of what we did. We started with our first composition, our background. We color corrected it, color graded it, all that. Threw on a little bit of blur, brought that into here threw on our text, uh, we put a long shadow on our text just to kind of stylize that. Um, and then we have our solid layer with our audio spectrum, customize that, polar coordinates to make it circular, and mirror to make it mirror. And uh, that is pretty much it. And then we threw a little bit of wiggle on there and we have a visualization. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully this video helped to show you how you can uh, create some cool visualizers and customize them and make them your own as well to really show off the character of your music and to uh, have a video that really helps show off your music when people listen to it on YouTube. And if so, definitely hit that like button, but if not, feel free to hit that dislike button. If you have any questions or comments about this video or anything else, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button.